Okay, so if we look at the uh, system international or interna international system of base units, uh, we can see um, all of the units that are going to use for the various measurement uh, quantities. Uh, the meter for length, kilogram for mass, second for time, Kelvin for temperature again, uh, the mole for the amount of substance we're, we're going to introduce and talk at length, uh, ampere for current, and candela for luminous intensity. Now, um, just as a, an aside, most of the time when we look at mass, uh, we're not going to be using kilograms. Um, we're going to start off with grams, the base unit of the metric system, uh, primarily because in the chemical laboratory, working with a kilogram of material is quite a bit. Uh, working with grams and even less milligrams are usually uh, more often the case. Um, as I said, for temperature, we're also going to use degrees Celsius most of the time. And just to point out, uh, if you haven't seen or aren't familiar with an ampere, it's a measurement of electric current, which is a measurement of charge across a given point over time, uh, such as electric current will be electrons going uh, through a circuit over a period of time. So an ampere A is actually equal to 1 coulomb over a second, or coulomb per second. If you have one ampere, you have one coulomb going over a second. Um, so uh, when we think about um, current, we're, we're going to boil it down to charge. So one other unit I wanted just to introduce here was C, which is the unit for charge, and that is a coulomb. Okay. Uh, if you want to measure how bright a light is, uh, in a lot of physics courses you might use units of candela. We'll see that we're actually going to look at this from a perspective of photons, but uh, we'll get to that uh, in a few uh, chapters or a few units. Okay, uh, one of the really good reasons, or one of the big reasons why we're going to want to use a metric system rather than an English system of units is because the logical and very thought out way that we can incorporate uh, prefix multipliers into um, units. So instead of talking about um, grams, uh, we could talk about uh, very, very, very large amounts of mass, very, very, very small amounts of mass without very, using very, very large numbers or very, very small numbers. Okay, so what we mean by that is that if we start out with our base unit, one gram, um, if we're working with a larger uh, mass, we can think about this as, you know, working with kilograms. So we can apply a prefix to our base unit, and that stands for some multiplication of ratio, either a factor of 10 or one-tenth um, of that value. So, going up from our base unit, we know that there are a thousand grams in one kilogram, or kg, okay? Um, we can also incorporate scientific notation. Uh, 1,000 is, of course, 10 to the third, and we'll review scientific notation uh, in just a, a moment. Okay, uh, if we're looking at even larger masses, we can say that there's a million or 10 to the 6 grams in 1 megagram. Okay, capital M, mega. Um, sort of in everyday um, life, you've seen these prefix multipliers used for, you know, uh, information technology or computer sciences. Okay, um, you can think about data being sent over an internet connection on kilobytes per second scale, a thousand bytes or megabytes uh, per second. And of course, mega being a larger num uh, number, a uh, million bytes in a megabyte or a thousand bytes in a kilobyte, the megabyte connection is that much more faster. Okay, um, Going even higher, we can incorporate um, the fact that there are 10 to the ninth grams in one gigagram. Okay, and you can see this for data storage. Um, you know, several years ago, I uh, used to have floppy disks uh, that had megabytes worth of storage. Now we have flash drives that have gigabytes worth of storage. And you can, of course, store a lot more uh, information on those flash drives. 
Okay? Even larger than a gigagram or a gigabyte, uh, we could have 10 to the 12 grams in one teragram. Okay? And that, of course, is a trillion grams. A giga was a billion grams. Um, and you can look at the, you know, another analogy to the computer science or computer technology field. Uh, hard drives um, for the past several years, you know, five, ten years ago were gigabytes, 100 gigabytes, 200 gigabytes. Now you can easily find um, hard drives with terabytes worth of storage at, uh, you know, reasonable um, prices. Okay, so that's as far as we're going to go on the uh, prefix multipliers for larger values in our base unit. Okay, uh, one note to say that um, we talked about these equalities in terms of grams, but you can start out at any base unit. Just like we transition from a megagram to a megabyte, you can use mega for any base unit. You can say that there is uh, 10 to the 6th uh, seconds, a million seconds in one megasecond. Or you can say that there are uh, 10 to the ninth um, meters in one gigameter. Okay, so it doesn't matter what unit you use, the prefix multiplier or the relationship, the equality between those two units are going to be equivalent. Okay, that was for large numbers. What if we want to uh, talk about values that are much smaller um, than our base unit? Okay, well, we have prefix multipliers for that. Okay, so now let's um, talk about uh, base unit of liter for volume. Okay, let me clean that one up a little bit. If we're talking about uh, volume smaller than a liter, it might be nice to uh, use perhaps, say, a um, centiliter. So there are 100 or 10 to the second centa, small letter C, centiliters in one liter. Okay. Now, uh, notice that I switch my prefix multiplier or my value, excuse me, the, of scientific notation to my prefix multiplier side before I had it associated with my um, base unit. Okay, you can conversely say the same thing um, using the scientific not notation on your uh, base unit. In one centiliter, there is 10 to the minus second liters. Okay. Both of these equalities say the same things, that in, uh, you have in one liter, you have 100 centiliters, or in one centiliter, you have one one-hundredth of a liter. Okay. Uh, I just typically use positive uh, scientific notation more often, so I like to think about it here. But again, you can use uh, this form uh, anytime you need to as well. Okay, uh, going down to smaller volumes, you can say that there is a thousand milliliters, 10 to the third milliliters in one liter. Okay, there are a million, 10 to the sixth microliters in one liter. Okay, and microliter uses the Greek letter mu as its prefix. Greek letter mu, which is a, uh, uh, looks very close to a, a, a U with a uh, sort of front leading tail, if you will. Okay, even smaller than a microliter is the nanoliter. 10 to the ninth nanoliters make up one liter. Uh, even smaller is 10 to the 12th picoliters equal one liter. Now again, you can use the converse saying in that one picoliter there is one trillionth or 10 to the negative 12 liters. Uh, both of those say the exact same thing. And once again, you can use any base unit. Okay? Um, in one 
microgram. There is one millionth of a gram, or there are a million micrograms in one gram. Okay? And actually, let's go back. I actually forgot a uh, one prefix unit that pops up once in a while, and that is the deciliter. There are 10 deciliters in one liter. And deciliter is a very common uh, unit of volume in the healthcare field if you need to give patients uh, some volume of fluids, say an IV solution or just a you know, saline solution, uh, you might give them some amount of deciliters. You'll hear that in the healthcare field quite a bit. Okay, so those are the prefix uh, multipliers that we're going to use uh, quite a bit of the semester, so it would be uh, uh, really uh, nice if you, uh, you know, put those to memory.